Welcome to Sustainable News. Today, World Elephant Day, and I had a very nice conversation with the Honorable Najib Balala. He is the Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, that's in Kenya. Um, first, some other news. Some is negative and some is positive. And if you like this program, two buttons, like and subscribe. You can hit those if you like. Thank you. Forbes is talking about why are climate activists gluing themselves um, to art in Italy. Now, they say they want to draw attention to the looming environmental crisis. But in my opinion, destroying anything, be it art, be it UNESCO site, is really not the way to go about that. The group is facing damages, um, charges of damage, and uh, resisting a public official. Now, I like climate action demonstrations. I do not like rioting. I do not like destruction. And uh, I hope they're put away for quiet a well. Now, I posted this on LinkedIn with my comments. That post was taken down. Um, not sure why I asked. They did not get back to me. In the end, I can only take it that Microsoft and LinkedIn are on the side of these uh, extremists, I would call them. Now, someone said there's always glass in front of these paintings. Um, this happened in London as well, the National Gallery. I did not see any glass whatsoever in front of the paintings. Okay, BBC, um, they say heat waves have become more frequent, more intense, and they last longer. And they say it's because of human induced climate change. So much that workers in Iraq, they got a day off because temperatures, they passed 50 Celsius. 50 Celsius, 122 Fahrenheit. I had problems breathing when it was 40 Celsius here in the UK. Um, let's go to some positive news on the same channel. Great Barrier Reef sees a record coral cover, but still it is highly vulnerable. Coral has recovered from storms, from bleaching events to record levels across much of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, and I think it's absolutely fantastic news. Reuters is saying that new coral reef restoration technology aims to reverse climate change damage, and that would be the reef off the coast of the Caribbean nation Antigua and Barbuda, and the project's name is Ocean Shot. Okay then, World Elephant Day, that is today, and there was an article in the Nation Africa. It was titled, uh, Climate Change Killing More Elephants Than Poachers, says Tourism CS Balala. Now, further in the article, it says we had nine elephants poached in the past uh, eight months, 179 elephants dying because of drought. And that is a huge number, and the time is ripe to discuss climate change. So... I'm very grateful uh, to speak with Honorable Najib Balala of the uh, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife in Kenya and asked him about exactly this. Uh, what we can do, we can say in Kenya, we've been very successful in addressing the issue of poaching. Uh, it's not easy, it's tough, it's not gone yet. Uh, we are still finding challenges. But the investment the government has put forward in anti-poaching programs and also the hard work we have gone between China and Europe in closing the, so the, the markets, uh, because without uh, demand, there'll be no supply. Uh, so the market, the closure of markets was very important. Uh, so successful of China and the UK and now Europe, I think it's been uh, highly appreciated because the demand now is less, but also the efforts of our rangers that have been on on, on their toes, particularly when it comes to poaching. Uh, so that's the good news we have. Uh, government has invested in the last four years over $30 million in compensation funds. Uh, but also we have another outstanding backlog of another $40 million, which we need to pay. And government on their own cannot be able to address this challenge. But this is a continuous uh, issue. Animals leave their habitat, they go out to farm, they destroy the crops, they kill people. These things are unpredictable, and we need to have resources into that. And I'm calling to the world to establish a human wildlife uh, fund so that we can be able to address these issues promptly, rather of delay them, and then we lose the goodwill of communities around national parks and prote protected areas. So that goodwill is very important. The second one is climate change. Uh, again, climate change, we cannot resolve it overnight. The long drought from 2021 till today, again, it has affected our habitat and ecosystems. We have seen, that's why we have seen animals moving out from protected areas to 
to, 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 to settlements where people are, and that's why human wildlife conflict has increased. But more important thing is that the huge animal, the iconic animals like elephants, Again, we have seen in Savo National Park, which is over 2 million hectares, and it's a huge park, the largest park in, in, in Africa. Uh, again, we have lost uh, in the last uh, uh, eight months or almost a year over 100 elephants inside the park. And then the others outside the park we have lost. Uh, so poaching is tamed because of two things. One, efforts are successful, but also markets are shut. Uh, again, uh, death of elephants ha is on the rise, but there's no rain, uh, so there's no water. I've been flying to Savo National Park of late, but it's not just about Savo. It's the northern part of Kenya where almost uh, 1.5 million uh, livestock have died because of drought. Again, it's more important we have to address the issue of climate change as a priority and address the issue of, again, human-wildlife conflict and how do we compensate uh, humans uh, when they get attacked because we don't want to lose the goodwill of the communities around conservation. Okay, I quote, poaching in Kenya has been reduced to a single digit in the last eight months. And I think that is truly amazing. Well, uh, we, have, uh, we, are, we have invested heavily in anti-poaching programs and those anti-poaching programs using technology. That's a key thing now. Now we monitor, we have elephants with collars, we have, again, uh, lions with collars. Uh, but more important thing, te new technology is important to address the issue of surveillance, but also anti-poaching program. So technology will be key for the future. Okay, I quote, it is important to conserve at least 30% of the planet's land and waters um, by 2030 as we are facing a huge population in Africa and therefore we need to balance conservation, economic development and community interest. Furthermore, I quote that for conservation to succeed, it is critical to put people at the center of conservation. I understand that the population of Kenya is growing, even though that growth itself has been decreasing. This uh, comes from the World Bank. Now, people, however, they need to live somewhere and they need food. Is that a conflict? And if that is a conflict, how is the government going to work around that? Well, first of all, uh, Kenya's population is over 53 million people, 2022 figures. Yeah, although the percentage of uh, growth has declined, but the numbers are still high. There's competition of agriculture and human settlement conservation because people want one land and one land become more valuable now. The prices have gone up. It's important for us to put conservation as a big agenda but we need to balance between development, social development and economic development of the people and put people in the center of conservation. The minute the communities appreciate the benefit of conservation, then they'll be the ones who will be defending rather of waiting for government to come and defend wildlife in our countries.